Hey, what's going on guys? So we're going to be casting this game between the Evil Jester here at 1031 in the blue versus Marshmallow for the win here in the red at 666. So, um, our player in the red, he did PM me, he wants to show off his deck, which is a, a deck I have not casted before, I believe, and it is an Araya deck, so uh, Araya, the Lord of Searing Flames, and um, so he's going to normal, normal summon, and he special summoned uh, Salt Frog first. But uh, yeah, it's a Araya Lord of Searing Flames deck, and I've really not seen it in action um, on doing that work. I've seen it once or twice in person. Um, I never really got to see it like it's to its full extent. I just kind of like beat it just because uh, it does take a little bit to set up, and Heavy Storm does beat it. But there's a whole bunch of stuff that protects it, like Imperial Customs. So let's see what our player in the uh, blue is playing. Um, I think he's playing maybe it could be Lancer Monarchs uh, because usually normal Monarchs doesn't really run Rodent and Hooden. So we're going to summon Gale, okay, so I guess he can attack with Gale, but, um, Lancer Monarch is an interesting deck. I, I personally prefer just regular Monarchs, uh, just because the Lancer Monarch takes a little bit of time to set up, a little bit longer, I'd say, um, but, uh, it, it does have the ability to, uh, get out a really, really stronger field, because Monarchs is just kind of like, you have your one card out, and if it dies, whatever, you just get out another one next turn. So he's going to Gold Sark for Uriah here, and so... We get our riot out by sending three continuous face uh, up trap cards to the graveyard. And once per turn, you can select a spell or trap on the card on the field and destroy it, and your opponent can't chain it anything to its effect. Um, and also, it will, it will have at least 3,000 attacks, so it's not bad. I mean, it could potentially just attack for game. Um, but the thing is, um, it gets a, a monarch deck. His effect won't be too uh, great, I'd say, at least to be able to destroy a spell or trap per turn. Which isn't bad, um, but realistically, I don't think it's going to be uh, able to do anything good. Just discard just some another swap fraud, and we see a skill drain come out, and uh, that actually might be something that will be able to hold uh, our player in the red off until he's able to get out um, the uh, setup he needs to get out Araya. So interesting. So he will not be able to send. Oh, he's going to remove. Uh, he can make Gachi, but what? Yeah, I mean, it's still a. Decent one is at 18 defense, I believe. So, but Gale can still half and attack over it. Ah, uh, but it, was one of them a tuner? Oh, he's just tri oh, tributing three for Obelisk. And, wow, well, I, I mean, I did not expect that <laughs> for a player in the uh, blue here. Um, he's saying one second. Uh, you cannot respond to the Obelisk. Uh, his summon butts and skill drains on the field. I'm not sure if that uh, does anything. I don't know if it's like... Because some monsters, they have effects where, like, it's just unaffected by it. So we can save zone uh, on Gale, okay. Um, but Gale won't be able to half. And... I don't know. Okay. But yeah. We'll move to defense and just kind of sit on it for a while. I think that that is pretty good against... I mean, what is he going to do? I mean, he needs MST for an answer. Uh, but, I mean, I did not expect to see Obelisk come out. But our prop store player in the blue for actually getting out, uh, used to be able to get out Obelisk really easy with, uh, like, when, uh, Substitute was legal, um, used to be able to get that card out a lot easier because you'd have, like, uh, Fishboard Blaster, and there's so many more options to get that thing out. Um, and when it came out, like, basically one game, so just, you summoned Obelisk, it was the win condition against a lot of different, different decks. He's checking his graveyard, so he, he can get Treeborn, though. Skill Drain will not change that. Um, I'm thinking, how can he get over the safe zone Gale without MST? Because um, obviously you can't have any effects. What he could do, though, is he could Tribute for a Monarch, and then chain, like, uh, like you know, Book of Moon, so it resolves face down, and Skill Drain only affects face up monsters. So, if you're ever playing and there's a skill drain on the field that you need to get rid of, and you can seek out for a Black Rose, and then Book of Moon the Black Rose, you'll be good to go. And uh, after that, ooh, he's just going to uh, Magic Planter. So, uh, Imperial Custom, oh, uh, I was unable to click on it fast enough. But uh, if you guys are unfamiliar with the card Imperial Custom, what it does is face up continuous uh, trap cards can't be destroyed. Um, you'd have to destroy the Imperial Custom first. Well, it's, it's all face up uh, continuous cards can't be destroyed, except for Imperial Custom. Because that is also a continuous face-up. Yeah, so it's all continuous face-up traps can't be destroyed until Imperial Custom is destroyed, basically. 
And so, uh, Magic Planner. Um, it was also this card was also seen in some Ninja decks. Were playing this card because uh, you get to send it to the graveyard and you get to draw two. So it's basically like it cycles through your deck end. Occasionally, it is a plus one. But uh, unfortunately, our player in the uh, the blue there, he just really can't get over that. But the thing is, I don't know how good. I think he should be adding Uriah like a few turns ago. Not that it really matters because. Uh, Oh, what do I, you know, because I was thinking, oh wait, Skill Drain would get in the way, but he would be sending Skill Drain to the graveyard. Um, okay. But the problem is, I don't, I think he has one continuous in the graveyard at the moment. Um, he has gold, I don't know one of them is gold Sark. Oh yeah, it's gold Sark, uh, one, one of the Imperial Customs, and Magic Planter. So he would technically have four, and he would be able to point for point Obelisk. Um, yeah. So, okay. Because at first I was like, wait, why would you play Skill Drain? That would hurt a lot. And if this goes off, that would kind of hurt. And Imperial uh, Custom is chained. And so, um, those two would be destroyed because uh, it doesn't protect the face down. Uh, and Salt Morning also is not continuous. So, there is an Imperial Custom. So, uh, oh, and you can only control Imperial Custom, which I did forget to mention. Um, but I don't think you'd want to control more than one anyways. <laughs> I mean, because if they have you, you still lose both. Uh, it would just kind of cause more problems. But you could still set another one, and if they destroy one of them, you can chain the other one, and it'll be good. Um, interesting choice for Zephyrus. I think that that is a good card to run that. Because then you can uh, put back your you know, your safe zone, if you wish to do that. Um, but yeah, that safe zone is really proving to be worthy and help out. And as well as Gale, it does get rid of a lot of different things like... Um, it can get rid of Xi'an because, you know, Xi'an only has, uh, 1250 attack after Gale uh, uses its effect on it. So, I mean, our player in the uh, red can basically stall for quite some time until, um, we see an MST, perhaps. Let's see what happens. So he's thinking what he wants to do, and yeah, save and remove, yeah. So, as long as he can get rid of that safe zone, he'll be able to get rid of the Gale and pretty much attack for game, I'd say. Um, but, yeah, I mean, or, I mean, even if there's a Marshmallow on the field or, like, a, a Spirit Reaper, uh, well, obviously with Skill Drain, it would negate the effect, so it wouldn't work too well. But I was trying to think of, uh, you know, what other cards people can use to stop Obelisk, but against a Monarch deck, they would just, like, make you top deck reaper and just yeah or they make you like remove reaper and then you take a uh, you just negate the effect of removing and it would just be destroyed anyways unless it was face down then in that case uh yeah they'd take a thousand and yeah but i'm interested to see how this duel plays out because uh i mean obelisk is obviously very strong and um he'll need to get um a few uh, continuous traps in there before he can make an attack over obelisk but the thing is, Skill Drain is also protecting him uh, quite a bit. And the same sort of protect our player in the red. But if he gets rid of Skill Drain, I mean, most likely something's going to come out and it's going to get rid of uh, Uriah. I think our player in the red is possibly setting up for another safe zone. And once he has, like, safe zone plus Uriah, he should be pretty good on the field. Especially when he has, like, such high attack. Um, basically, if he has 5,000 attack, then yeah. Um, I mean, technically, you could just get your Uriah up to, like, you know, 11,000 attack or something, or would it be, like, 12,000? Yeah, if you got it up to 11,000 attack, you'd just be able to, like, ooh, that's interesting. I didn't expect to see a Wind of Rabbit come out. And, um, so technically they're not cards on the field, so I'm not sure how that results. But, you see, oh, okay. Interesting. So he's making his move, finally. So I was like, why would you go for Zen Mage when Skill Drain's on the field? Uh, he definitely didn't have an answer. But now the problem is he still has to deal with Obelisk, and on top of that, you can't target Obelisk. And um, this does target one card in the field. I like most of the new cards in Yu-Gi-Oh! now, they're saying target the card. It doesn't say, like, um, select or anything. So, like, you know that it's targeting. So, you know, anything that, like, targets. So you can tribute one, and he's going to go for a Delg the Dark Monarch. Uh, ooh, that's interesting. Um, 
because at Del it's two cards. I thought it was going to be monsters, but I mean, generally you remove the monsters. But if it removes those other uh, traps, then yeah, that could be uh, pretty darn good because uh, he would be able to remove the uh, continuous uh, traps there, and that would uh, kind of hinder the uh, ability for Araya to be able to attack over stuff. But the only thing with Delg, and I think the reason why it's not ran, is because he can't attack the same turn. If he was able to, I think he'd be ran. I think he's okay. And a Solemn Judgment comes out, so he will be at a very low life. And um, I mean, the thing is, like, he doesn't really have to worry, because Obelisk can just be like, attack, and then, what is, oh, what is this? Trade Toad, okay. And I like how it says, except for Frog the Jam. Like, why are, why does all these cards have so much hate for Frog the Jam? Like, Frog the Jam isn't even good. <laughs> like all these, all these frog cards are like except for Frog the Jam. This, this probably doesn't say it. But wait, yeah, it does say except for, for Frog the Jam. Like, what's up with the hate of Frog the Jam? <laughs> like, I don't think Swag, uh, a Frog the Jam has any good effects. Um, I mean, it's a normal monster, and there's. I don't know if there's some, like, broken support for it. Like, when you control Frog the Jam, destroy all cards your opponent controls. Like, like realistically. <laughs> he's gonna bounce that? Okay, and, uh... The Salt Frog will most likely end up dying. Oh, no, he's going to, uh... Tribute for... Ooh, Des Frogs. So, I guess it might not be a Frog Monarch. So just, well, I mean, he was running one Monarch. But this is, like, Frogs, like... I'd say more than Monarchs. Just because he, he was able to get out all those plus he's playing a lot of different other ones. So he's saying one second on that. Um... Okay, so he has no Tadpole, so it's just a 19 beater. Um, I don't know why he got this thing out, but he probably has some play with it. Okay, so that's going to go through. And, uh... Oh, we can summon another one. Okay. Oh, it's another one. Okay. I don't remember seeing a Tadpole in the reverse. So he's going to overlay, and that is a level 5. So he's going to make Tyrus a really good option here. Um... So yeah, and, it, and that can't be destroyed by card effects. And on top of that, Zen means can't target Obelisk. So I think our player in the blue has got an amazing field. Um, I mean, our player in the red kind of did stall for a while, so he, it did allow the player in the blue to get that. And he's going to take another save zone on it. And that's going to be problematic once again, because how is he going to answer it? Um, yeah, it can't be destroyed by battle, so he doesn't have to detach. And yeah, save zone definitely. He can still yeah he could he can still attack it, but um. Yeah, he could still attack it. Uh, and I, I don't know why he's attacking with Tyrus because, uh, well. He, oh, Tyrus can destroy the. Uh, the uh, no, okay fields, because it's just one card. Uh, yeah, okay, target one card Oh, okay, so Tyrus would be destroying save zone, and then that gets rid of Zen Pains. Very good play. I'd say that that was uh, interesting. Zen Pains to uh, stop that. Because oh, it's at the end of the battle phase. And there's nothing he can target because. Um, you can't target Obelisk, and Terrace can't be destroyed by card effects. So it's pretty much, and I think he's probably checking that out right now. He's reading um, because yeah, you can't target Obelisk. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, I think our player in the uh, red is kind of at a problem. Here. He detached the wrong card. Let's see. We can go for dark card. I don't know. Like, do you have that many darks? Well, I mean, he, he technically has to destroy one. I'm not sure what happened since it can't be destroyed. I think he can still target it. I mean, he can't target Obelisk, but he can target Tyrus. It just nothing would happen. Or well, we could just target that save zone. But I'm pretty sure he wants to keep that on the field for the Araya. Uh, well, it doesn't matter what target he picks because, <laughs> yeah, so. 
Yeah, it, it doesn't matter. Um, and let's see what our player in the uh, blue can do. I wish I could check out. I, I don't remember any tadpoles. In the graveyard. Um, unless some other card counts as a tadpole in the graveyard. Okay, so he's going to... Tribute? Or bounce back? Okay, so he's going to bounce back for Zephyros. And he'll take 400 damage. And then he can summon Thunder King. Overlay for Utopia and just stall. Okay, that's interesting. I guess that works. I'm not sure if it's it effect target. I'm not sure if Utopia targets. Uh, So, I mean, realistically, he could, um, he could just attack with, I mean, even Tree One would attack over the, uh, Utopia, because he would attack with both, and then he would negate both, and then he could just attack, um, he's gonna tribute two, okay, so let's do, for a Gores, okay, so yeah, at this point, it's game, he would attack with these two, and then he would attack with that, or, it doesn't really matter what order it does happen in, because, uh, Either way, there's no more targets. But I think our player in the uh, blue is going to go for extra style points here. So he's going to go for Rodent Toten and uh, maybe now, now attack. Okay, so he's going there and he will be attacking now. And that will get rid of Utopia. Oh well. He's just going to negate and then Obelisk will attack for the massive 4,000 damage. I'm going to attack with that and then it dies. And then he gets to redeclare his attack if he wishes to, but I don't think it's going to matter. Um, unless Battle Fader suddenly came out, but, um, yeah, that was an interesting duel. I mean, unfortunately, Ariad never came out, but, um, yeah, I don't know if going for Zamains and getting rid of that skill drain, because that skill drain was really keeping the player alive, and what was the player going to do? Uh, he, oh, he did have MST and Dark Hole. Alright, uh, well, that was interesting, but uh, I like to show it off in uni unique decks, unfortunately, it wasn't unable to be very good. But anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Asian Eyes White Dragon, signing out.